What's up guys, Killing Softly back again and today's video is going to be about the Battlefield 2042 gameplay trailer that came out uh, about a week ago. Had about a week to kind of watch the video a million bajillion times. I think I've picked out all the little details that you need to know about the up and coming Battlefield game. A lot of this stuff could be tentative. This is the first gameplay that we've seen of the game so take all of it with a grain of salt. We're going to be learning some more about the game as as we get closer to october so just like i said grain of salt without ado guys let's get right into it all right so i'm gonna split the video up into two different parts uh the first part we're going to talk about some of the ui elements that we get to see in the gameplay and kind of the implications that go along with that and the second part will be some of the gameplay implications that come along with those things first let's start with the ui stuff so the first thing that we'll notice as the trailer starts is that the match information and the hud is all kind of condensed down in the bottom portion of, of the screen so we got the match information right here the player count we got the mini map the mini map looks to be similar in function as the one in battlefield 5 this is very like decluttered which i like i like decluttered this feels very streamlined i, I like the way that the hud looks in this next thing i want to point out is that there are distance markers under player names now i don't know if that's something new i don't specifically remember that in other Battlefield games. But this is pretty cool because for your squad mates at least, you'll always see how far they are away from you. Even if his name is not displayed, you see this distance marker. So right here, you can see that when you aim at any teammates, uh, any team vehicles, or any enemies, because you'll see right here, when he aims at this guy up on the stairs, you can kind of barely see it right here. You see this guy's name, you see his health bar and it also has the distance on him. It seems to have only popped up when he did damage, so that may be the case, which, you know, in that case, it's not a free range finder for a sniper, but still pretty interesting. I, I think this is a, is a very nice addition. Next thing I want to point out, they adopted the same thing from, I think Battlefield 1 started this, where they started outlining the actual objective boundaries on the minimap. I know Battlefield 1 had it, I'm pretty sure Battlefield 5 had it too. It's just something to help out people to understand, you know, where where do I need to be at to be in the objective. Focus down here, we are we are in zone C right now, which is a large zone. Zones are also going to have these sub-zones, so you see this C1 right here, that's actually this zone right here, this little white whited out area. There's these little sub-zones inside of each objective, or you know, objectives inside each zone, however you want to word it. Essentially, th this is saying that these maps are so big that they can't just have like one zone. That was one problem that I felt with Battlefield maps previously is that they were getting bigger and bigger, but the way the game played stayed the same. Essentially, you're just bottlenecking and funneling all into the same spaces just because the zones or the, the objectives are still pretty much the same size. You don't end up using half the map because of that. I don't know how it's gonna work. Let's say you're inside of zone C, but you're not in you know C1 or C2 or whatever. I don't know if that counts as players in the objective or not, or if you have to specifically be in these zones. That'll be something that I guess we'll, we'll figure out later down the road. All right, so right here we can kind of see it. This is one of your squad mates down here, and this is another squad mate right here. And in addition to having their, their player name and their distance marker, you've also got their specialist icon right here. And for your squad mates, these are, are always showing. Like I said before, even if your name isn't showing, the specialist icon will still be showing. The only exception to this that I've found in the video so far is the Delta or Dozer character. For some reason, he doesn't have a specialist icon. I'll play this little sequence, and when it switches from his perspective to the guy that switches his attachments, um, this guy apparently doesn't have so see this specialist his icon showing but this guy doesn't have one so i don't know if this is like a plain soldier or like you, you can select just a plain soldier with no specialist ability it did seem like he had an ability though yeah, i mean he has something over here i'm not sure what that means i just thought it was kind of interesting something worth pointing out 
So another thing along those lines, right here in this point in the trailer, behind the minimap right here, there's another little teammate right here. He's got his little blue dot above his head. This guy right here never has a dot above his head. I don't think it's an enemy because he's running the same way as everybody else. This guy's not shooting at him. My theory here is, I wonder if this is an AI because they've already said that AI are going to be in the lobby to fill up the lobby. So I wonder if the player characters that don't have the little little dots above their head, if those are teammates and they're just AI teammates. I don't know. I thought that was kind of an interesting thing that that guy didn't have one. Could be an enemy too. I don't know. This could be a big stage thing so it looks like a bunch of people are fighting. So this is something that all of you probably noticed in the, in the gameplay trailer, but the storm actually distorts your UI and it also forces this guy because I guess he's close enough. It forces him into this animation where he's like holding one hand up. I assume that if you're close enough to this thing that you can only fire hit fire, you can't ADS or something. So one thing I wanted to point out was this guy, when he uses the grapple hook, and this is his specialist ability, after he uses the grapple hook and switches back to his primary weapon, take a look at the, the middle of this cross here. If you've played Pathfinder on Apex, you might recognize it. This guy's gonna jump over here, you know, he's swinging around like our favorite robot friend from Apex. And look at this, look at this thing. This right here, it's a little cooldown for his grapple hook. I think that's pretty cool. So this is the last little UI thing. It actually tells you how many friendlies and how many enemies are on the objective, which I think is a huge, huge improvement. Before you just have to like look around and see like uh, how many teammates are here. I wonder how many enemies are here. Do some, some mental math in your head real quick to see how many enemies might be lurking around. All right, so now let's move on to the gameplay elements. First thing I wanna point out, one of the glaring things that I noticed in the trailer, there are no dedicated medics or support classes, or engineer classes for that matter. I've combed through the video trying to find some inkling of those previous class roles that we're used to in Battlefield games, and I have not seen anything in here like that. I don't think this means we're gonna have an attrition system like Battlefield 5 had, but it, I did think it was pretty curious. You have a special that has the syringe pistol so you can revive people but other than that she doesn't have any med kits or anything to heal your teammates i wonder if you're just gonna like, you have some kind of regen system or something like that i don't know how that's gonna work for ammo though i did notice though this has the biggest gameplay implication of anything in this trailer even the giant tornado has nothing on this right here i want to point out something you've got all these attachments in this plus system right here um you've got your magazines you got sights you got barrel attachments you got under barrel attachments he goes and switches to this drum magazine i just want you to pay attention when he does that watch his ammo count did you see that before he switched he had 26 bullets and 42 reserve bullets once he switches to the 50 round mag watch what happens he got 50 bullets in his magazine. He also got 150 bullets in his reserve now. Um, what? <laughs> you can just get more ammo whenever you want? I don't know what this Im implies. This may be a bug, I don't know. I don't know why th that you would gain more ammo reserves just from swapping attachments. I guess that's something we're gonna find out later down the road. But I did wanna point that out to you guys. Another gameplay element that's making a return from Battlefield 5 is this gameplay element right here. Squad revives are coming back, which I like. I think that's pretty cool. I like to be able to revive my squad mates. So this is a, a new mechanic they've added in with the tanks where the tank tracks now have uh, realistic physics on them. Right here, he's kind of like hanging over the back end of the sand dune and the tank track is actually forming to the sand dune. Later on in the video, we actually get to see this in action where you see the tank drive over a car which is pretty cool. So back to the attachment plus system, the devs did address community concerns about whether people would be able to essentially have an entire arsenal at their hands, be basically be like a, a one man army kind of deal. They assured us that that's not gonna be the case. One of the devs I think was actually qu quoted saying, you're not gonna be able to turn an SMG into a sniper rifle. You're able to kind of add attachments onto the platform that you currently have. I don't know if, if you have to be in a certain 
area in order to do this or if you can just do this from wherever that's something else we'll find out down the road hopefully there are takedown animations back in the game i actually heard in a dev interview that this is actually a third person animation so kind of like in warzone or new call of duty games when you do a finishing move on someone it takes you out into the third person perspective i don't know if it's going to be like previous battlefields where everybody has the same takedown animation or if it's going to be like cod where you can purchase different takedown animations. So we also got our first look at the vehicles and I want to point out a few gameplay things with the vehicles. If you see over here you've got your vehicle seats. Obviously you've got the tank driver is the first seat and then you've got a top gunner, a back gunner, and you've got a spotter. They've said in dev interviews that being in a vehicle in this game everybody is going to have a role. Even this little guy that's the spotter he's going to have a role and this actually kind of Reminds me of a gameplay element that was in, I want to say it was in Battlefield 3, may have been in Bad Company. I can't can't quite remember. But I do remember there being like a, a spotter. You were just like scanning and could spot things and mark them for targeting and stuff like that. This thing also has two gunner seats as well. Sounds like the, the tanks are going to be pretty formidable, especially if you've got four man squad driving a tank and they're all communicating with one another. So just like the tanks, they also have a bunch of gunner seats in them too. You've got a top gunner, left gunner, right gunner, and then you got some passenger seats on the bottom. So this is another new gameplay thing that they've added into the game and and the devs have said that you can pretty much call in a vehicle wherever you want on the map. They haven't gone into much more detail about this. Is it like a kill streak? Is it a score streak kind of deal? We don't know. Hopefully there's some balancing on that. I'm sure there is, but they didn't really go into much detail about how this mechanic works. Not having to respawn at your base or whatever to get a vehicle, especially for people that like playing in vehicles a lot. That's going to be a big gameplay improvement for them. So this is another little cool thing that I found when coming through the video. I'm going to slow it down. You can actually see the wires on this guy's headset move, which I think is pretty cool. Little dynamic things on the player model. Being able to move around with running or environmental stuff like explosions. Watch this guy's headset right here. You see it moving around? You can actually see the headset wires moving around. So another thing that I noticed is that pretty much every character in the game, there's only two characters that I, that I saw in the trailer that did not have a rocket equipped in their inventory. And DICE has said that pretty much any specialist can equip whatever gun they want, sniper, assault rifle, LMG, whatever you want to equip for that character, as well as gadgets. And gadgets apparently include rockets. So. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess if you can call in vehicles wherever, it's kind of nice to have a rocket in your back pocket. That's going to be kind of interesting when it comes to the vehicle gameplay because they also said you can shoot the vehicles when they're coming down from the sky. So that means that people are just going to be firing a bajillion rockets as soon as you call a tank in. We'll have to see how that plays out. A few things to point out in this little clip right here too. This truck right here is like a little civilian truck. You can actually see them driving this thing too. So I guess that means that you'll be able to drive things that aren't necessarily tanks or transport vehicles. Another thing that I wanted to point out too, you see this squad member right Right here. When I first looked at it, I thought he had a jetpack or something, but as I watched it again a little bit closer, I saw that he actually has tracers coming from his gun. So it's him shooting his gun, but he's moving, and if you look really close, there's a wire that he's ziplining on. Pretty cool, pretty interesting, which means that you can get up there somehow. Maybe there's like some kind of ladder or you just jump out of a helicopter, I guess. So something I noticed in this scene is that this guy's got a riot shield. Once we hit play, you see this guy, he's actually behind some kind of deployable shield, it looks like, because it's got a handle on it, and it kind of looks like it folds up. Maybe there's a, a class that has, you know, riot shields, or maybe it's just a gadget that you can equip in your inventory to deploy these things. So this is a, a new little gameplay addition, and the new Frostbite engine, they're able to do this ground deformation when tanks and cars and stuff drive through sand or something blows up on the ground. You hit play, you can kind of like see the tracks and stuff that's leaving in the sand. The last point that I want to make in the video is DICE did not show off any building destruction whatsoever. And that's something that's kind of been a concern with the community that I've noticed. People are complaining that they've Keys, the destruction is going to be unlike anything of any Battlefield game. And then the gameplay trailer comes out and there's absolutely zero destruction at all. And they actually had a dev interview where 
one of the devs talked about in the back of the level that they showed off there's actually a little town where all the buildings are fully destructible if you're like me i want to see what the destruction looks like are we going to be seeing the destruction from bad company 2 where you could literally level an entire building and it was strictly based off of you know structural integrity and things like that or if it's going to be some scripted thing like the siege of shanghai level where you make the building fall and it's like this scripted event in the game we'll have to see you know the next gameplay showcase that they have of the game i expect to see that kind of stuff and hopefully we will that's just something that i thought was pretty glaring in the trailer and i know other people in the community have felt that too all right guys well that's all for the video today leave a comment down below and let me know what you're most excited about about 2042 if there's anything in the gameplay trailer that you found that i didn't point out be sure to leave a comment and we can discuss it if you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like make sure you're subscribing to the channel as well all that support helps me to keep making these videos for you guys it is much appreciated until next time guys i will catch y'all later